Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. By the beginning of the Oligocene, Europe had undergone drastic changes stemming from the Grand Coupre extinction event. The dawn of the Oligocene brought to an end the closed tropical forests that had once covered the continent. In their place, the western reaches of Europe shifted to a more open, warm, temperate woodland ecosystem, somewhat comparable to the southern United States today. Eastern Europe became a part of the extensive titanosaur savanna biome that covered much of Asia during the Oligocene, which was dominated by drier bushland with a sparser covering of trees. Sea levels began to shift, finally establishing more permanent connections to Asia via Russia and the Middle East. This would prove to be a disaster for Europe's indigenous animals, which had been afforded a relative degree of isolation during the Paleocene and Eocene. A previous wave of immigrants had arrived during the early Eocene via Greenland, outcompeting many of the endemic Cretaceous lineages. Now, a second influx was occurring, spreading into Europe from Asia. Ceratopsians, such as Hippogryphoidians and Novoceratopsians, moved westward, as did the diversifying Ankylotarsiforms and the more basal members of Nanocornei. These were joined by Cranosaurid oviraptorosaurs, Avimimoids and Brontavids, as well as the predatory Aleoramoid tyrannosaurs and the commonplace dromaeosaur genus Typhoraptor. All of these animals were either represented by the same genera found in early Oligocene Asian sites or by close relatives. For some of Europe's endemic genera, the end of the Eocene was to be their final curtain call, even before the arrival of new competition from Asia. The Boreoceratopsians vanished at the end of the period, as did the Rhododromids. Local hadrosaur diversity fell at the boundary, but in certain cases were able to survive into the Oligocene alongside various newcomers. The orthomerid hadrosauromorphs were an example of this, being adapted for high browsing and were larger than many of the incoming Asian ornithischians. Earlier and more basal forms, such as Swabihadros from Germany, quickly died out during the beginning of the period. Although faring better than most hadrosaurs, orthomerids declined by the late Oligocene. During the early Miocene, only a single genus remained, the huge and highly specialised Franciscosaurus of Spain. Another minor lineage, the Garganomimids, made it into the Oligocene. These were a family of basal ornithomimosaurs seemingly being close relatives of the putative Bulgarian ornithomimosaur from the Maastrichtian. Generally rather small in size, most genera range from 2 to 4 metres long and were forest-dwelling omnivores. The type genus, Garganomimus, was the first of this lineage to be described and, as its name suggests, was endemic to Gargano Island during the Miocene and the Pliocene. Indeed, this animal was the only non-avian theropod native to the island and produced up to six species of varying size and ecological niche. The oldest form, the 2.5 metre Bavari Mimus, inhabited the early Oligocene forests of Germany. The Ampelosaurid titanosaurs were able to weather the storm in wetter and more heavily forested Western Europe, while the invaders from Asia, such as the genus Baluchi Titanus and the Maharajasaurians, were initially confined to the eastern regions of the continent. The fairly large Ampelosaurid Ebro Titan was widespread in Europe, with fossil remains uncovered from Spain, France and Germany. A high browsing armoured herbivore measuring up to 18 metres long, the genus vanished at the Miocene boundary. Meanwhile, Europe's major large theropods, the Eurodraconid abelisaurs, were able to survive due to their specialised sauropod hunting mode of existence. The proliferation of new genera allowed these animals to greatly expand their range out onto the titanosaur savanna, being one of the rare examples of a European endemic group that thrived during the Oligocene. Outside of Dinosauria, similar patterns of expansion and replacement present themselves. European mammal faunas show a sharp and sudden change during the early Oligocene, with the extinction of most native multituberculates, chimolestans, and basal eutherians. The elephant shrew-like gypsonyctopids managed to survive into the Oligocene, but became extinct by the end of the period. The only group of multis to survive the Grand Coupre extinction in Europe were the Tilodontoids, 
seemingly since none of the immigrant genre inhabited arboreal niches. These squirrel-like omnivores were among the last multis in Eurasia, only dying out during the late Miocene in Europe and South Asia. The end of the Eocene saw a massive influx of Asian immigrant taxa into Europe. An interesting example of such an event was the arrival of Asian-derived Zelestans in Europe. During the Paleogene, a basal Zelestan family was native to Europe, the Ricona myodontids. Known mostly from teeth and partial jaw bones, these small omnivores abruptly disappear from the fossil record during the latest Eocene. This coincides with the first appearance of the derived Asian Hervetotheriidae, in particular the widespread genus Myocervulus. Known from the late Eocene and Oligocene sites in Kazakhstan, Bulgaria, Germany and France, this 40 cm long mammal was clearly successful and long-lived. Up to eight species have been named. Multiple specimens have been described and have given paleontologists a decent idea of the animal's overall form. Roughly the size of a large rat, Myocervulus was nocturnal and possessed molars with tall crowns adapted for shredding vegetation. Although its diet would have consisted mostly of plant matter, the large canine suggests that Myocervulus may have also fed on insects and small vertebrates on occasion. The limbs were somewhat elongated and the pedal claws were blunt. These adaptations enabled the genus to live in a wide variety of environments, from closed forests to more open wooded savanna. Indeed, along with the glirungulate chemolestans, the zelestans were the most common mammalian herbivores of the Oligocene and early Miocene, essentially replacing the larger multituberculates across Eurasia. One of the more important new arrivals in Europe were the placentals. The latter would only cement themselves during the late Oligocene, however. One of the only endemic mammal groups that weathered this storm for more than a few million years into the new period were the Herpetotheriomorph metatherians. These generalist nocturnal omnivores, originally entering Europe from North America during the Eocene, survived until the Middle Miocene on the mainland, before finally vanishing from Gargano Island during the Pliocene. Another odd endemic European group, the Doratodontoid notasuchians, were present. Descended from the late Cretaceous Doratodon, these crocodiliforms possess a fragmentary fossil record, with the first remains tentatively assigned to the group from the late Paleocene of France. However, the first genus known from comparatively good material is the 1.5 metre Colosuchus from the early Oligocene of Germany. This was an unusual animal, with long slender limbs and highly derived mammal-like heterodont dentition. The molariform teeth at the rear of the jaws were flat and rounded, while the caniniform teeth were prominent and blade-like. It has been suggested that Colosuchus was a somewhat fox-like omnivore, with a diet consisting of small animals supplemented with fruit, vegetation and carrion. During the Miocene, Doratodontoids would expand their range beyond Europe and onto the open savannas of Miocene Asia. There, a number of bizarre forms emerged, being the only Notasuchians to retain a foothold in Eurasia during the Neogene. Meanwhile, Banid Chelonians were still common finds in Oligocene deposits in Europe, both in terrestrial and aquatic settings. Alongside these was an Asian newcomer, the Nanxiung Chelid Roma Chelis. This was the first of its kind in Europe, being a robust herbivore similar to a large box turtle. Nanxiung Chelids became a highly diverse and successful lineage of herbivorous Chelonians on Alter Earth, filling niches that are taken by the Testudinids on our Earth. Thanks for watching, everyone. Next week I'll be covering the Paleogene Wolves on Hooves, the Mesonychians. See you again soon. Cheerio.